I vår fyller Israel 75 år. Keren Kajemet har i över 120 år utvecklat det moderna landet Israel. Vi har utfört omfattande miljöarbete, träplantering, ökenbekämpning, vattenprojekt, infrastruktur för att kunna välkomna judar från hela världen. Arbetet fortsätter. Nu handlar det om att välkomna utsatta judar från bland annat Ukraina och Ryssland. Din gåva skapar förutsättningar för deras utbildning, försörjning och integration. Fira med oss att den 2000-åriga drömmen om Sion har infriats. Fira Israel 75 år genom en jubileumsgåva. Alla som ger 750 kronor eller mer får ett jubileumsdiplom och en pin med Rolf Wallenbergs diplomatväska. Betala via Swish eller Bankgiro. Märk din betalning Israel 75 år. Välkommen till Drömmen om Sion. Vi står i Tel Aviv, mitt i centrala staden och med skyskraporna bakom oss som siluett. Precis. Dagen efter utropandet så anföll de arabiska arméerna. De anföll och Israel fick försvara sig på fyra fronter. Och eh, det var ju David mot Goliat, verkligen. Det var verkligen David mot Goliat. Men man lyckades och eh, sen har det ju varit ett antal krig eh, och det har kostat, det har kostat ett högt pris i människoliv men också i me- soldater som blivit skadade för livet. Mm. Dagen innan självständighetsdagen så minns ju Israel alla som har stupat. Dels i regelrätta krig, men också via terrorattacker. Det stämmer. Så innan Yom Atzmaut befrielsedagen eller utropandet av Israel, firandet av utropandet av Israel, självständighetsdagen, så lyder sirenerna, sirenerna. Och eh, man hör då, och då stannar bilar mitt i trafiken och folk stiger ur bilarna och man eh, tar en stilla minut för alla som har stupat. De skadade eh, i krigen har ju också en egen förening som tar hand om dem ända till livets slut när det gäller rehabilitering, att få, och, få återfå ett normalt liv så långt det är möjligt och så vidare. 50 000 medlemmar. Precis. Eh, det heter då Beit Halochem. Eh, huset för de stridande. Och eh, det finns fyra sådana eh, etablerade idag. Eh, och ett femte håller på att byggas. Och vi träffade en överste som leder det här arbetet. Vi träffade doktor Moshe Shema som leder det här arbetet. Han är överste i armén och han ansvarar för Tel Aviv. Han berättade om arbetet. Vi fick en guidning, se hur man jobbar. Och så gav han oss i Sverige några strategiska råd, för han har doktorerat i militär strategi. Precis. Så han sa bland annat, ni kan inte bara tänka fem år. 
Ni måste tänka 50 år framåt. För det beslut ni tar gäller inte bara er. Det gäller också era barn och era barnbarn. Precis. Och han menar på att även om det är lugn just idag så kan det plötsligt vändas till en annan situation. Och det märker vi ju i Sverige idag, eller hur? Precis. Så vi beger oss till Beit Halochem. It's not a secret that we are surrounded by a lot of enemies. If you wish to, to know the numbers, I will tell you something like that. Here in Israel, give or take, we have the maximum 9 million people, okay? And uh, 24,000 square, 24, square kilometers. Sweden, if I remember correctly, it's something like 500,000 uh, 500, square kilometers. Well, 20 times more than Israel, the same population. Just to give you the numbers, okay? We are surrounded by 400 million Muslims. Now, not all of them are our enemies. We have a peace agreement with, uh, with Egypt, as you know, and with uh, Jordan, with, uh, even with Morocco. But still, as a nation, as a Jewish nation, seven and a half million Jewish here, because we have uh, uh, Arab population too which are totally Israeli citizens, excellent, surrounded by 400 million Muslims, okay? This is the numbers. So, in average, we have um, a war or a special operation between five to six years. Every five, six years, boom, we have either a war against the Hezbollah in the north, or against Hamas in the south, or whatever, okay? Every war, there are soldiers that are killed or wounded, okay? And the proportion is like that's the, the last operation in Gaza, for example, I think it was the protective age, if I remember correctly, uh, we had, and, and it was a very a small operation, it's not a, a military operation, when I say operation, a military operation, yes? we had well, approximately 2,000 wounded soldiers. Now, most of them, thank God, not severely wounded, most of them. The, as you know, the, the medical care in Israel is one of the best in the world, so they can save and they can give a, a very good treatment. But even just 500 soldiers are severely wounded, they need rehabilitation. So what's happening? This is our organization. So after they will release from the army, we don't have soldiers here, it's just veterans. After they will release from the army and they will release from the hospital, they will come to Bet Alochem. The Bet Alochem, if, if I will translate it uh, to English, uh, the house of the warriors or the house of the fighters. They will come to here to get the rehabilitation process until the rest of their life. It's until 120 years. As long as they live, there are no limits. Here they will get all the hydrotherapy treatment or the physiotherapy. Uh, we have workshops. We have a very good, um, um, some kind of authority, authority to have rehabilitation with sport, okay? We use sport as a tool. So we shall send them to uh, Paralympic Games. We shall send them to, to compete with other disabled in Europe, in United States, whatever. Because for them, it, it will give them some kind of meaningful, you know. They have a, a, a reason to, 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 to wake up in the morning and to do something, not to be disabled, if, if I may say, if I may use this, this term. Because we don't want them to have in their perception that there is something that limits them. No, you can do everything. So we shall encourage them to go to the university and we shall give them all the scholarship they need. So we will encourage them to go to find a job, to get married, to bring children, to bring the children to Bet Alochem. So I will say it's some kind of a comprehensive solution for the disabled uh, uh, veterans. So we have four centers. 
one in Tel Aviv, which we are sitting here, is the biggest one, and it's the first one. Okay, it was opened immediately after the Yom Kippurim War, 1974, the Yom Kippurim War, which was a very problematic uh, war for Israel. Then we open in Haifa, then we have in Jerusalem, and we have in Beersheba. And now we are in the middle of a process to build the fifth one in Ashdod, in the seashore. So in Ashdod, we are going to use the seaport as a re rehabilitation process or rehabilitation tool for the disabled. We have 50,000 members. We are the only organization, I think, in the world that we don't want any more new members. We don't want new members. We, we have here, in our Beit HaLochem, Jews, Christians, Muslims, and uh, Druze. Although it's not in our mandate, okay, as an organization, to, to get to our lines, uh, people that were uh, uh, heard in, in terror attacks, we do it because we have the facilities. But the majority here are soldiers that uh, were wounded during, during a war and they come to Bet Alochem. Now it's not just if, if that they get hurt during a war or, 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 or some kind of a special operation. It could be even as an accident. If it's happened to them during their army service, they may come. It's like everybody else, because it was during their army service. The youngest one, as I told you, we, it's, it's a long life. The youngest one is 18 and four months. He was stabbed no, just recently. The oldest one is over 100 years old. He was wounded in the independence war. Okay, and he still come to Bet Alochem. Immediately after the independence war, a group of wounded uh, um, uh, soldiers came to Ben Gurion. He came to them, David Ben Gurion, to um, uh, to, to Tel Shomer Hospital with uh, Professor Shiba. Now the hospital is named by Professor Shiba, and they decided to have an organization that will represent them. Okay, and Ben Gurion agreed, and. So uh, this is the organization. So it was uh, 48, 49, something like that, okay? It's, it's, listen, it's a very unique organization. I can tell you that we get delegations all, from all over the world, okay? That wish to see what we are doing in Bet HaLochem, okay? What is Bet HaLochem? How we have some kind of a rehabilitation a, a process that it's, I will say, 99.9% .9 success. Okay, so we, um, three years ago, we had the, the, the Veterans Ministers, Minister of the United States. He came to here with a huge delegation to see what is Bet HaLochem. We get, every year, we have, um, we have a very special program with the wounded soldiers of the British Army, you know, in Afghanistan and so on. So they send every year approximately 160 wounded veterans to, to, to this Bet HaLochem, mainly in, in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem, and they have some kind of sport games with, ad, uh, with our uh, veterans. It's some kind of, you know, it's some kind of competition, but it's not really competition. It's more friendly. friendly. And we have mixed mix group with them, Israeli wounded with the, with the, with the England, the, the UK wounded, and so on and so on. This year we are, we are going to Düsseldorf to participate for the first time in the in the um, Invictus sport games, you know what is the you know the the, the UK uh, Royal uh, um, um, game, something like that. Very unique, very nice. Uh, although we we, we 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 do not belong to the UK Empire, I will say, but still we we we, part we are going to send uh, um, uh, athletes to the, to these uh, Invictus games uh, every year. We have a, a delegation from Canada, from Canada. W something like between 100 to 120 um, uh, athletes, which are cycling, you know, cycling. Yes. And they come every year on a yearly basis. And they ride with our uh, cycling groups, which are um, uh, disabled, uh, uh, disabled people. So some of them are blind even. 
So we have a, a tandem um, uh, bicycle, you know, with two, with two, uh, um, yeah. Uh, and it's amazing. So we should do it with Sweden too. It's about time to do some kind of projects like that. Cooperation. Cooperation, jo joint ventures with Sweden. Yeah. Why not? Why not? What do you do with people, with soldiers that uh, got uh, a nervous breakdown? Ah, PTSD. Okay, yeah. You know, post traumatic. Yeah, yeah, post traumatic. Yeah, we have it. Unfortunately, we have a lot of them. Uh, pe you know, uh, uh, people that were in cap uh, um, captivity in Syria or in Egypt in Yom Kippurim War. We have a lot of them. Yeah, or just you know because of the of the of what happened to them uh, during the battle, it, they have PTSD. So we established in every Beit Lochem, and I mentioned Tel Aviv, Haifa, Jerusalem, Beersheba. We have a group. It's a closed group just for PTSD. It's, it's called the PTSD group, and we call it Achiad. Achiad in Hebrew, if I will translate it to English, uh, um, is some kind of. Uh, um, my brother forever, okay? And they get her together all the time, on a weekly basis. I would say in every battle, I mean average, I don't have the exact numbers uh, in each one of them, but in average we have something between 70 to 80 uh, participants in each battle, in each one of them, and we give treatment not just to them, to the wives, okay? Because, because it's, here it's a family treatment. It's not just for the individual, because if he suffers from PTSD, the family, it's reflect the family too. We know that. Yeah. So we bring the wife to, to you know, to, to a support groups. We send them to, to trips, you know, hike in Greece as a group, but it's a close group, okay? To give them the ability that they can do it. They can achieve things, okay? And, uh, and of course, they have the, they have the, the treatment and the long t t uh, treatment in hospital and so on, but we give them the, the added value, we'll say, okay? Yes, yeah. It's an excellent, excellent treatment, I must admit. We have a good results, either from the physical side or from the um, um, uh, psychological side, both of them. But we have, we have groups. But to give you the proportion, when I said that we have 50,000 uh, members, disabled veterans, it's like all, all the Swedish army and the National Guard together. It's less than 50,000. The Swedish, yeah? It's less than 50,000. But it will change. Now, because the problem, yeah, I, <laughs> it's a good point. You need, you need now to have immediately a strategic plan to your army. You know, I'm a colonel. <laughs> well, I'm a colonel in the army, as you know, and, and my PhD is in, in, uh, is in stra strategy. It's a very interesting issue. Uh, I'm not in a position to give recommendation to the, to the Swedish uh, government. I, I, I'm sure that you are going to change your strategy and you will do it rapidly. Now, Swedish is a very big country, okay? It's like that, it's a big country, it's like that, okay? And you know, you need to know who are your neighbors. I'm not, <laughs> I give you a hint, okay? And you know what's happened now in, in, in Europe? Even if you now live in peace, and I will emphasize that now, even if you now live in peace, you know, the world is not so stable and uh, uh, there are changes, geopolitical changes all the time. So you need to think in, in a strategic point of view, okay? What are the trends? What is going to happen 50 years from now? Not five years from now, because you're a nation and you have, re you have responsibility to your children, to, to grandchildren. And if you will analyze the trends in an um, objective way, you will uh, immediately understand that you need a very strong army all the time, all the time, and especially now, and you need to start now. And it's not easy to build a strong army. 
It's a process, it's a long process, you know. So, as a colon, I'm saying to telling you, pay attention to this, to this area, to this subject. Is there, are there any soldiers, veteran soldiers, that are going back after being treated, going back to the army? Yes. There are some that, you know, that if they are not severely wounded, they can go back to the army, but most of them will have to volunteer to do it. Okay, to volunteer to do it, but a lot of them, if they are not severely wounded, they will do it because they, need, they wish to, to, to go back to their unit. But then, after they will release from the army, they will come to Bet HaLochem. Yeah, and they will bring their family to Bet HaLochem. If, if you will come in the summer, you will go to the swimming pool, you will see children. You say, what is the connection between children and disabled veterans? But the children of the disabled veterans, because it's a comprehensive solution here. This is your, just a short, uh, your history in the army. Yes, well, yeah, well, uh, I, you know, I joined the army at the age of 18, like everybody else, and then I went and, and they sent me to the artillery. But immediately, I, after several months, uh, they sent me to, to, the, um, to a commander course. So I did it, and they told me, okay, go immediately to be an officer. So I said, okay, you know, this time, it was 40 years ago, you cannot say no, okay? So I, I immediately I went to the um, 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 officer course. It was a very long course, almost um, nine months. Uh, and then I came an officer, a young one. And uh, what happened that um, during my, pe my period of time, there was the first Lebanon war. So I was then the commander of um, a small unit, something like 70, 80 uh, uh, fighters, uh, with all the cannons, you know, and the, the artillery and uh, the chefs and so on. And it was in Lebanon. So I spent two years in Lebanon. It was difficult, not easy. A lot of, you know, a lot of casualties and a lot of, you know, you, you, you need to, to, to be in a war situation on a daily basis, on a daily basis. I released, I wanted to continue with the army, but my mother did this, uh, disagree, totally disagree. She said, no. She put, no, you're not going to, to continue in the army. Because, you know, I did my, so I was, I was released from the army. Months later, they called me to the reserve. Where? In Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but in the, in, in the reserve, I did, um, I did my career, okay, the, the main career. So because I b became very fast uh, the uh, commander of a battalion, which is a, a big unit, and then of a brigade, and so on. So I enjoy it very much, and I will say something like that. Every th every th everybody thinks that when you join the army, you give to the army. I say the opposite. The army gave me much more than I gave them, much more because they build my personality. I must admit, I, I say it t totally like that. The army build my personality, most, most, most of it, yeah? So they gave me a lot. Uh, and, and, uh, and they gave me the, even the, the not just the ability, um, the, um, I think the ability is a, it's a good word, to, to, to be able, you know, to be able to, uh, to be a commander during a war time and to storm a target, it's not easy, especially if you are 21 years old. It's a child. So this time I thought, I'm, I'm not a child, 21, 22 years old. I'm, of course I'm not a child. <laughs> it's a child. But they taught me how to do it, okay? Uh, I, I ended the career as a colonel, okay? Um, uh, or in English you say colonel, okay? This is the... the the exact. It's, it's very nice for, uh, for a reserve, okay? For a reserve. And I, I must say, I rejoiced very much. I was the commander during the reserve. I was the commander of Gaza. I was the commander of the refugee camp. I was the commander of Jenin, whatever you want. I went to Lebanon again and out again and out. But it, it was very easy, not easy, but it, it was easier for me because I speak Arabic very well. So when I was studying further, I, when I was the commander of Jabal, which is a re refugee camp in, in, in the Gaza Strip, I could communicate with the, with the community itself. And it, was, it, was, it helped me a lot, okay?
Ja, det var allt för denna gång om drömmen om Sion. Och se oss nästa vecka igen. Samma tid, samma kanal. I vår fyller Israel 75 år. Vi vill fira detta genom att färdigställa Rolf Wallenberg Park utanför Jerusalem. Rolf Wallenberg var en svensk hjälte som på uppdrag av UD räddade tiotusentals judar under andra världskriget. Rolf Wallenberg is an angel. He saved us. Come from heaven to save us and go back to 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 to. <laughs> I receive my life like like I approved. Vår målsättning är att Sverige ska bli det israelvänligaste landet i Europa. Parken är en viktig pusselbit i relationerna mellan Sverige och Israel. Fira med oss att den 2000-åriga drömmen om Sion har infriats. Fira Israel 75 år genom en jubileumsgåva. Alla som ger 750 kronor eller mer får ett jubileumsdiplom och en pin med Rolf Wallenbergs diplomatväska. Betala via Swish eller Bankgiro. Märk din betalning Israel 75 år.